So this picture and others like it have been going around Twitter this week. Of course, it's accompanied by fans complaining about how this kind of dominance shouldn't be possible at Talladega. Now, I know this isn't everyone, but I have to ask for those who are saying this, have you ever watched races at Daytona or Talladega before? Seriously, have you? Well, if you haven't, let me show you why this is normal. Let's start with some guy you may never have heard of then, since you've never watched a race at one of these tracks before, by the name of Bill Elliott. In 1985 at Talladega, Bill Elliott fell behind by two laps around the 50-lap mark of the race. Under green flag, mind you, Elliott made up those two laps, and then some, going easily to victory lane. Another strong performance at a plate track was during the 1990 Daytona 500. Most of you probably remember the race for this. Half a lap to go. Four-car shootout to decide it all. Dale Earnhardt. Here comes Duke Coke down on the inside. Oh, Earnhardt has Earnhardt problems. Earnhardt slopping back. Something is amiss. Here comes the field driving for the finish. And on the outside, it is car number 10, Derek Cope. Something amiss on the Earnhardt car. Coming to the line. It's Labonte pulling up. And an amazing finish. The what many of you don't remember, more than likely, is the 199 laps that led up to it. Earnhardt led 155 of those 199 laps. Utter domination. Let's fast forward about 11 years or so. Pretty much everyone who's watched NASCAR knows about this finish. They come, turn four, final lap of the Pepsi 400. Michael Walter been second, but it's going to be Dale Earnhardt Jr. Using lessons learned from his father to go from sixth to first and score the victory with the Pepsi 400. Yep, that's right. Dale Jr. led 116 of 160 laps and could pass people without drafting. No one long term has had a problem with it, or the fact that Jr. and Michael Waltrip dominated the plate races from 2001 to 2004. It was almost a foregone conclusion that everyone else in the pack was racing for third while those two raced for the lead. I would say that those DEI years were much more dominant years than the past race was at Talladega this weekend. Same goes for the Roush cars at the plate tracks in 2012. It's the same thing. Some years the team just figures it out. A drafting package that is head and shoulders above the rest. So it's normal that this happens. Another part that everyone isn't really looking at is the fact that the SHR cars had a perfect strategy. All of their restarts were executed to perfection, most of the race they spent lined up together, and all four of their drivers are seasoned veterans, with Eric Almirola being the least tenured cup driver on the team, having raced for 10 years. Meanwhile, Clint Boyer has been in the series for 13 years, and Harvick and Kurt Busch have been in cup series for 18 years. Why do I focus on this? Because it brings to light that these drivers have more maturity and more patience than many of the drivers they're up against. All of these things together should and did result in complete dominance. And had the final caution not flown at the end of the race, then I have no doubt whatsoever that SHR has a 1-2-3-4 finish, seeing how fifth on back were slowing each other up due to the fact that they were all side drafting with each other and not trying to catch these four cars. So please, don't get too upset about this performance. Honestly, I think this is a one-off race. Next year, we'll have a different package altogether at Daytona and Talladega, aside from the Daytona 500, as well as the Ford having their Mustang instead of the Fusion. But what do you think? Let me know down below and leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, have a good one.